rule number five, do not let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. Now, before I got to this chapter, I did see this rule and I was kind of confused because I was like, what exactly does he mean by this? I have a rough understanding, but I was also still very confused. And once I got to it, it did make a lot of sense when he was able to break it down. He used his own life experiences with his own kids and other kids he had been around. And as he got into it, I kind of recognized my own life in this way and in certain ways and how I've seen some of these things and other children I've been around through my life and how certain parents handle it. But it's basically, a, it's it's like between this, it's like, are you going to be a per- permissive parent or an authoritarian parent? It's not good to be either because both can lead to a socially stunted kid. Because if you're super permissive and just allow your kid to do anything, that's not great because there's no there's no friction. You're, you're not supposed to be your kid's friend. And that's something he talks about as being something that's very common nowadays. You're supposed to lead and guide your children to become responsible human beings. And if you're super authoritative, I don't even know if that's a word, but I just said it. You know what I mean? It's not good as well because you don't allow that kid to actually grow and develop because you just kind of take control. So it can allow a socially stunted kid because maybe you don't allow them to go and experience certain things that they need to and a lack of some sort of social interaction. And he basically says if you don't like your kids, no one else is going to. So part of it is if there's things that you're noticing that your kid is doing that you don't enjoy, that means other kids aren't going to enjoy being around them. Other adults aren't going to enjoy being around them. And it's going to slowly but surely hurt their social life and their social development where when when they become adults, they're going to have different problems to deal with because they're not going to be good at dealing with social interaction like And part of the things he talks about in this situation was not allowing certain behaviors that you don't like to slowly build, to try to combat them as a parent sooner than later. Because if you allow them to keep progressing and building, it's going to be a lot harder to change the progress it has already made. So you kind of want to stop it as soon as you possibly can. Like if your kid won't share with other children, or if your kid won't eat, or if your kid won't act right in public, there's some reason behind it and if you don't if you're embarrassed by the way your kid acts that's not a good thing that means you're doing something wrong and some of the stuff he talks about is even between parents is you gotta combat it as a team I know I'm not I'm not a parent I'm not but I have seen a lot of the stuff he's talked about in my own life being around certain children and families it's like oh no I kind of I kind of see what he's talking about I see where this can relate and how you got to come at it as a team. If both parents aren't aren't involved in the same thing, or one doesn't do the same amount of effort, it's gonna throw it off. You got to work at it as a partner. But it's just a bad idea to allow children to act in ways that other children will dislike. Because if they do, they're not gonna build friends. They're not gonna develop that social mind and like learn to communicate not necessarily physically communicate but in the sense of social contracts and like working your way up through life it's it's something that's very very important for a child to develop so to not allow them that beginning steps to build a good foundation like you're supposed to as a parent to provide you're setting your kids up for like a a more challenging existence later on like your primary responsibility as a parent and this is what he says but I I, I do agree at one point and I, I even see the faults and maybe how I was raised in certain things nothing against my parents they did the best they could but at the same time seeing this it's like oh yeah okay I see and I know I'm better off than a lot but I, I see where it comes from And he says that the primary responsibility is to help your children behave so that the social world opens their arms to them. Because if your children behave, that means 
the the social interactions with everyone's going to be better so they're more likely to be around adults they're more likely to listen and learn and and grow from situations just from their overall behavior because people will want to be around them we all know those kids that every adult and even other kids recognize it where there's just some children you don't want to be around because some adult or every adult even the parents might realize it but it's because the parents won't do anything to change it that no one necessarily enjoys being around that child and that's not a good thing for that kid it's like yeah it's annoying to the person that's around him at that moment but in the long run it's going to be to the detriment of the kid not everyone else and that's why he says you need to basically if, if there's some issue that you have with how your kid's reacting you need to fix it because that means it's going to have larger consequences later on in that child's life now on to rule number six set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world so what exactly does he mean by that um i guess the best way to put this one and kind of break it down is stop doing things that are bad for you because if you criticize and i'm a hypocrite in your own right it's hard for you to then criticize the world if you're not able to change stuff you're dealing with so if you have bad habits if you're doing this and you're you're not necessarily just like kind of leading back to rule two if you're not taking care of things that you should be in the present moment there's not necessarily a reason or there I mean there is but there's not necessarily a place for you to criticize the whole world if you can't even affect change in your own life and so it's like it's like you, that you're not taking like no act for others until you have your act together like it's not that I, I kind of worded that wrong I typed that out badly I'm sorry but it's basically like it's not saying not to act for others until you have your act together like you, you can still do that but it's you got to basically recognize your own situations and, and work on them so it's like be humble and work on something that is right in front of you before you then take that to a large scale transformation of other people so I feel like this book has actually helped me because, I mean, that's something I want to hopefully do is to have an impact and effect on other people's lives through this podcast, possibly through the conversations I have with people on a change in perspective or at least getting a different perspective on something on life or even with doing a podcast, let's say, like this to be able to bring information that you didn't know about like maybe someone that listens to this doesn't know about this book and doesn't know these rules and by doing this and breaking it down it at least gives you the interest in possibly looking into it yourself and having a change on your own life so i mean i know <laughs> that i have not necessarily worked on some of this stuff right in front of my like right in front of me before doing this now since i've started I have, since I've started this podcast, I have worked on stuff right in front of me and stuff that I've been dealing with personally over that time. So I, I have been able to hopefully grow and I, I, I guess I try to be humble because I know that I've had humble beginnings when it comes to a lot of, a lot of stuff. I, I've, like, I could definitely say I've had a glow up. I know in high school I did not look good. I know I was not necessarily a super good looking kid. I was cute when I was young, but I, I got rid of that a little too quick, sadly. And so by I'm, I'm humbled because it's like just now from me actually taking responsibility for myself and getting to the gym and dieting and doing different things and being responsible for my own actions, I have then allowed myself to be better so it's it everybody comes from and has a different starting point but you gotta do something to then affect your your journey and hopefully a positive way to work 
towards stuff you want to do to have an impact on other people.